Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Umineko. Like I said before, let the games begin. In his dimly lit study, which was occasionally brightened by lightning, Kinso kept mumbling to himself, laughed by himself. On the antique clock with the intricate design that had been sitting on his desk, the two overlapping hands tilted to the right and began to slide. The measurement of time that could be counted at 24 had returned to zero, and had begun to count back again. <coughs> Are we going to have a deep, deep conversation about how clocks work? No. Is that the same as a person's life? You live aiming for a perfect 24, and the instant you reach it, you return to zero. People will probably praise the departed, saying that he did reach 24, but that surely is not 24. After all, that is zero. Is it necessary to reflect on the clock like this? Kinzo had been fumbling around with some tarot cards for some time. It looked as though he was trying to divine his own luck in the contest doing it over every time he didn't like the result. The most forbidden action in tarot reading was to try predicting the same thing twice. That was a desecration to the result of the fortune telling. And also desecrated the existence higher than humans, which became an oracle through the tarot cards. However, Kinzo knew. The reason the tarot card shouldn't be used twice, used twice was that since it was nothing more than a random number generator, it was natural that if you read them twice, a different result could appear. Therefore, reading twice was only forbidden to preserve the mystique of the tarot card's results. However, that me didn't mean that Kinzo didn't take tarot reading seriously. Kinzo's interpretation of tarot readings was done in a completely different way. That was to repeat the reading over and over, without giving up in the slightest, until he reached the result most favorable to him. What was the best result depended on the definition, but if he demanded the best result in a strict sense, it was the same as a simple roulette of luck, where he seeks, where he seeked an arithmetic, an arithmetic miracle. However, to Kinzo, who made miracles of numbers the basis of his magical power, this could become very much like a magic ritual. In other words, until the result he desired appeared perfectly, he would strive to repeat the tarot readings over and over, with conviction, turning the feelings of his heart into a prayer, so that when it reached heaven, the result would be sublimated. This was Kinzo's personal magic interpretation. Therefore, even though the tarot cards Kinzo used were exactly the same as generally used tarot cards, the way they were used was completely different. <laughs> Kinzo stopped his hands for a second. It seemed the result he expected wasn't showing up. On the contrary, many bad cards that shouldn't appear appeared repeatedly, and continued to interfere with the miracle Kinza wished for. So 
It seemed that Kinzo had received some oracle that was different from normal. But judging by the unlucky cards scattered over the desk, it was difficult to imagine that the oracle had been a good sign. For a while, Kinzo closed his eyes tightly, pondering something. Then as the thunder roared, he made up his mind about something, took the telephone receiver and dialed. Genji, get me more tarot cards. These ones suck. In front of the entrance hall, Shannon's previously burning face had been cooled off by the frigid air. She had thought that George's proposal would surely come sometime. It wasn't that her heart was not prepared, and she had nodded as if in answer. Had she really been reckless because of her youth? Should she have thought about her future more seriously? I wonder if he doesn't think of me as a cheap girl because of my immediate reply. Would I have been able to look like I was thinking more seriously if I had at least held off until tomorrow morning? Now that she had already received the ring from George, Shannon kept fidgeting in embarrassment. I should have done this. I should have done that. As she did, she heard the sound of footsteps splashing through puddles. Shannon immediately chased away the emotions welling up inside of her. She grew stiff, thinking that she would surely be scolded for spending too much time in secret in her secret lover's meeting with George. You're so noisy. Cannon was especially good at hiding his footsteps. Like he was a cat. He was able to suddenly be there without anyone noticing and leave in the same way. For example, even though he stepped in the puddles, the sound he made was far smaller than that of the rain hitting the puddles. Genji also had that ability. Well, originally. Though servants called furniture were supposed to be like that. Just like how desks and closets went unnoticed by members of the family. The servants also treated being able to appear unconcernedly when they needed to as a great virtue. In that sense, Shannon's footsteps still strongly asserted themselves. She was also trying to hide her footsteps. But compared to Cannon and Genji, well, you could say she was a little more lively. Eventually they reached the back door, and the three of them entered the, entered the mansion. Immediately, they thought they felt something. It was different from a sense of smell. It was as though they had felt it from the depths of their noses. And this hard-to-describe sensation, which you might call a sixth sense, allowed them to perceive that something was different than usual. Genji-sama. Yes, That perception made it feel as though some kind of tension was pressing on them. Realizing that, the three of them dashed up the stairs, aiming for Kinzo's study, still hiding their footsteps. When they dashed up the stairs, the smell of sweet poison particular to Kinzo's study reached their noses. Mo. Uh oh. After hearing cannon, she looked at the door to the study. A scorpion pattern was engraved on the doorknob. A powerful magic repellent. The final barrier which protected Kinzo himself. 
It had been broken. Of course, there was no change to the doorknob that the eye could see. However, that you could understand things that people couldn't perceive, were able to recognize that there was a dramatic change. Genji called in, called in this way after knocking several times, but there was no answer from the study. Cannon put his ear against the door, searching for a presence inside the study. To protect the backs of the other two, who were watching the door, Shannon faced the other way with her back to them, prepared for the unexpected. If you're still alive, assuming. Genji pulled a gold key out of his pocket. It was the only key to the study that existed, other than the one that Kinzo held. He stuck it in the keyhole and turned it heavily. At first glance, it looked like that meant that it really was a strong lock. However, now that the barrier had been destroyed, this door was as good as opened for anyone with magical power. The heavy sound meant that the door could be opened even by humans. As Genji respectfully bowed his head, and Cannon's sense of tension grew tighter, and Shannon acted nervous, they entered slowly, or they entered the study. They immediately discovered Kinzo's figure. He was asleep. He was sitting in the reception sofa so that his back faced them. Genji noticed the person sitting across from him, and again bowed deeply. Cannon also noticed that person, and he didn't bow his head. He went in front of Shannon and spread both arms, blocking the way to her. So, without even seeing that person's face, Shannon already had a good idea who it was. Oh, that's nice. She's back again. Kinji directed his greeting towards the thin darkness behind and to the right of Beatrice, where there shouldn't have been anything. Even Cannon and Shannon couldn't have imagined that someone would be there. However, the darkness answered immediately and praised Genji's eyesight. As usual, you don't disappoint. それにしても老けましたね。それだけの弱いを重ねましたか。充実した日々を過ごしております。ロノエ様におかれましても、ますます充実されておりますよ。お見受けいたしました。ええ、おかげさまです。そして社門も久しぶりですね。君は随分と美
わらわもすっかり嫌われたものだ坊主にくければ今朝までなんとかとはよく言ったものよ Beatrice openly sneered at Cannon's hate filled face. Then Cannon finally knew. Beatrice and Kinzo were enjoying a chess game across the reception table. But Kinzo hadn't even quivered. He was holding his head with both hands, his eyes closed tight, as he contemplated his next move. No. Was he in anguish? Or was he dead? わらわが金蔵に伝えたのは二つ良い知らせと悪い知らせだった良い知らせは儀式を終えずしてわらわと再会できる幸運を得たこと悪い知らせは金蔵が儀式の一番最初の意見に選ばれてしまったことだ<笑> She's dead now. I'm assuming. こればかりはわらわにもどうしようもない実に気まぐれにルーレットにて決めたのだからう,う嘘つけもうて遊んで殺しているくせによしてカノン君さて金蔵そろそろ負けを認める気になったのか Is he dead or alive right now? <笑> I'm assuming he's still dead わらわとの長きにわたる勝負は決定 Oh, apparently not. At least not yet. At a glance, you couldn't tell the current situation on that chaotic chessboard. However, judging from Kinzo's anguish and Beatrice's malicious relaxedness, it looked as though it was already decided. <laughs> そなたとの勝負に決着がつくことは万感の思いあれどもはや恩襲を超える楽しかったぞ退屈しない数十年であった Beatrice advanced her queen and made her final move It was then decided チェックメイトこれがわらわからそなたへの手向けだ I like the thunder in the background. Truly a good touch. Kinzo suddenly stood up and laughed, like an opera singer facing a full crowd and spreading his arms, as though he had succeeded in a century long plan. Wow. That laugh spat crimson. Crimson flames poured out from inside of him, spitting out even of his mouth, ears, and nose, and all at once his body was wrapped in hellfire. But Kinzo kept laughing, because he's crazy. The more he laughed, the more the hellfire spewed from his entire body and began to char him. Those flames became a brilliant light, which dazzlingly shone on the various magic tools throughout the room. It made their distorted shadows dance across the walls. Those shadows looked like the dead in hell, in ecstasy over Kinzo as he burned. And after making a contract with the witch, it was an extremely fitting end, in accordance with that contract. After laughing and howling in the roaring flames for some time, Kinzo fluffed to the ground, as though he was a puppet whose strings had been cut. Those incredible, bla incredible blazing flames disappeared as though he had been completely burned up. And afterwards, all that was left was a festering and burnt corpse that would make you want to avert your eyes. But man, that laugh just like cackling all the way to death. <laughs> ふさわしい死に方だと思っているくせになぜお前が姿を現しているよしてカノン君ベアトリーチ様を挑発してはダメすっかり怯えさせてしまいましたねプシュフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフ
そう嫌いでもないというのにね。Beatrice grinned. Cannon violently averted his gaze, obviously unhappy. His reaction was so different from what he had anticipated that it made the witch and her butler laugh. Kano, Beatrice is a man who 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 is <laughs> Cannon was taken aback by that creepy laughter. Beatrice's reasoning, reason for being here was not just to take Kinzo's life. The first twilight required six sacrifices. Kinzo alone wasn't nearly enough. And they had just nonchalantly came to this place. <laughs> But you might be selected anyway. Oh. Well. That sex. He instinctively figured it out immediately. Six sacrifices were required for the first Twilight. After Kinzo, how many more would you need to add up to six? That is pretty difficult, and this mansion, the number five, instantly made them think of the number of servants here. Genji had agreed to the witch's heartless announcement in his usual manner, without raising an eyebrow. Shannon, please. Compared to Genji, Shannon had not yet reached as high of a philosophical viewpoint. There probably really were regrets left in her heart. She probably wanted to spend a little more warm time with the person of her thoughts, George. But she released herself from that. After she took a single deep breath, a blank expression rose to her face. シャノンがそこまでの落ち着きを得るとは少し驚きでした。あなたも家具として達観したようですね。惚れた男と夜も共にできず、少しは悔し涙をこぼさんのか。退屈な女よ。ベアトリーチ様ごときにこの気持ち
お前はまだわらわを楽しませてくれそうだよなカノン Oh yeah, カノン君 A little less supportive of this whole idea Compared to the two who had taken a philosophical view of things, there was a painful anguish on Cannon's face. Cannon was still far too young to accept his demise after being told of it by a suddenly appearing witch. Cannon realized that he was being provoked. However, no matter how much anger spurred him on, his opponent was a witch. He was furniture. He hadn't a chance of victory from the beginning. But the witch was expecting that he would struggle in vain and writhe around, and was looking forward to it. Just thinking about that was frustrating enough to get his blood boiling. Was disappointing the witch by refusal to resist like the other two? The only way he could strike back at her? We saw how well that worked for you the first time you tried that. そなたがいくら怒りに駆られようとも賞賛のない戦いでは希望も持てまい無論勝ち目のない戦いではわらわも退屈というものならば家具は家具家具同士で決着をつけてはどうかそれならば勝てる希望も持てるであろう<笑>恐れながらベアトリーチェ様私がそのような出来損ないの家具に劣るようなことがありましょうかこんな可愛い子に私が万一にも負けるようなことなど<笑><笑>我が家具煉獄の七杭を打ち破ってみせよ<笑>そうだな。13人の生贄にえを逃れることのできる5人をそなたに自由に決めさせてやろうそなたの推薦する5人をわらわは無条件にて黄金橋に迎え入れるそれならばどうかキャノン understood that he was being provoked however the witch's condition was very tempting by this point Cannon couldn't care less about this evil ceremony the witch and the rest were trying to carry out. On the contrary, it was much more important that he remain alive so that he could be invited to the Golden Land and have his wish granted by Beatrice there. So, Nata wa Kagu wa iya da to nai ta na. So, Nata no nozomi. Makura o nurashite made nozomda. Ningen no karada o atae te yaro zo. Do da? すれば、ジェシカともむすばれるぞ。おお、ちょうどよい。黄金橋へ招ける5人にジェシカとそなたを推薦すればよい。自分だけが幸せになることに抵抗があるならば、さらにシャノンとその思い人である常時を加えればよ
若いですね羨ましいだから若者は好きなのだ源氏シャノンは下がれカノンルシファーは前へ仰せのままに<laughs> All right, sorry. I had a little bit of a, um, I went a little bit too far, and I just remembered that I was supposed to have applied a patch that someone had made in order to get the sprites back. Because apparently, I think this is the scene, or the, up, the scene that comes really shortly after this is the one that has all of the, uh, has all the missing sprites. I stumbled across it, so I, I came back to here. So we're going to stop for here. And then next time I'll apply the, uh, or before next time, obviously, but yeah, I'll apply that patch. I just have to go find it again. So sorry about that, but this is about where I wanted to stop anyway, just a little bit more abrupt than I planned on. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for some more Umineko. Bye!